MPs will vote tonight on plans to make it harder for trade union members to go on strike. There is absolutely no necessity whatsoever to employ the law in this draconian way. So I'm here with Francis O'Grady, uh, he's the head of the Trade Union Congress, that's the trade union movement, the first ever woman to lead the trade union movement uh, in this country. How do you sum up to people who are not really sure what trade unions are all about? What are they? What are they for? Well, it's, it's very simple. If an individual worker is trying to get a fair deal on their own, good luck, because the balance of power between any individual worker and the boss is always going to be unequal. So the only way that you can get a better deal at work is by banding together in an independent, democratic trade union. It's, it's like a way of working people looking after each other. That's all it is. It's as simple as that, really. What have the unions ever done for us? <laughs> well, we wouldn't have paid holidays. We wouldn't have equal rights for agency workers. We wouldn't have um, training in education and fair pay. But more to the point, society would look very different. I mean, it is pretty tough at the moment, but believe you me, if it wasn't for union campaigning, we wouldn't have an NHS, we wouldn't have free education, we wouldn't have health and safety, and we wouldn't have equal pay. Unions sometimes, I mean, because they're portrayed very negatively in the press often. Why is that? Why are the media so down on the biggest democratic movement that this country has? Could be something to do with who owns it. <laughs> <laughs> is that just something mm. like that. Um, I mean, I... I I think it's hard for unions to get a fair hearing, and, um, but we've got other ways of getting our message across. The government now is introducing trade union legislation. Should we, let's go through that trade union legislation mm. bit by bit. So what's your first objection? The government wants to introduce um, new thresholds, which people might say, fair enough. A bit dodgy as to why you have a separate threshold for so-called important services where the um, government happens to be the employer. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, people might say, well, that's fair enough. However, um, you have to ask yourself why the government is opposing our call for electronic and online workplace balloting that we know and can prove would massively boost take up. If they were really concerned about democracy, they would let us use online balloting. Because I've got a confession as a trade union member, been one for years, I often get uh, through the post, and I have yeah. to move all the time like a lot of people, yeah. through the post, you know, to vote in an election, I always forget. And it gets vote. stuck in the recycling or left on the mantel shelf or whatever. You know, I mean, I think it's time we were dragged into the 21st century on this. They are now proposing to give and encourage employers uh, to have the power to bring in agency workers to break strikes. And I think people think that's unfair, not just on the strikers who will be uh, risking their jobs being taken away, but on agency workers too. Are we really, do we really think that an agency worker who, if they're lucky, might have had a couple of days training, should be running up ladders, putting out fires, delivering babies, or uh, caring for our sick people? Do we really think that? Uh, the government is also proposing changes to what happens on a picket line when people do go on strike. And this, this is where it gets really quite sinister, I think. Um, so uh, unions are supposed to produce uh, and give 14 days notice of a protest and picketing plan. In that, we have to set out if we're going to write a blog and if so, where it's going to be posted and what's in it. We have to set out if we're going to have Facebook pages and what's going to be in those. Uh, we have to appoint a picket supervisor who has to wear an armband. Um, we have to tell them if we're going to carry a megaphone, if we're going to bring a banner, if we make any mistake on any, any of these requirements, then we can be issued with heavy penalties designed to hit the funds of working people who've put into that union. And it's just not fair. It's not democratic and it's not even necessary. Is yeah. there any other Western country where, I mean, because that's before these new laws yeah. are coming in, that makes it so, so difficult for workers to go on strike? Well, Britain has the most draconian framework of law for trade unions and strike action in Western Europe. The government will say, oh, we don't want to stop strikes. Of course you can still go on strike. But if you trip people up at every turn, if you introduce more and more technicalities and give employers more and more ways to drag unions through the courts, 
even when it would make no material difference to the outcome of a ballot. I think that is a very serious attack, not just on working people and unions, but on civil liberties in this country. Do you, what hopeful message would you say to people watching this who are thinking, oh, how are we going to sort this out? What hope do you have? Well, listen, I'm, I'm not going to pretend that this is going to be easy or that we're going to have um, overnight victories. But what I do know is that for all the ruthlessness, and I think it is a ruthless government, but it is not invincible. When we stick together, we can make a real difference. It, it, it won't be overnight victories here, but we will win in the end. I think that's a challenge for people watching to get organised in some yes. way. It's a great place to leave it, so thank you all right. uh, so much for having us to go through that with us. Lovely to speak to you.